Here we are in the Spiker model shop attached to the wind tunnel. Uh, before me is a 50% a, a scale model of a Formula One car and it is absolutely perfect replica to scale of the car that is on the track. This is the part of the operation that really uh, I, I would say defines Formula One as we know it today. The downforce, the physics, the aerodynamics involved in keeping a car on the deck as it goes around corners at inordinate speeds is what this sport has become to be about. With me is Simon Phillips, the head of aerodynamics Hello. at Spiker. Simon, just how important is aerodynamics to a modern Formula One outfit? Okay, um, well, in today's F1, aerodynamics is almost the most important aspect of the performance of the car. Yes, we've got the engines, which is a very important part. We've got the tyres, a very important part. Um, but without the level of aerodynamic performance that we have on today's F1 cars, they would be any other formula of race cars. Yes. And this model helps you project exactly what's going to, how the car is going to behave on the track. The purpose of this as a wind tunnel model um, is to give us a very accurate representation of the external shape of the car. Because we are in the wind tunnel looking for absolute fractions of a second mm. at each step. I mean, we're literally looking for component changes on the car which will make a one hundredth mm. of a second difference. And it's those lots of one hundredth of a second that will finally make your add time. up to a, yeah, yeah. an increment in lap time. Uh, the wind tunnel itself, this is like an industrial operation. It runs in, in optimum setting when, when it's up and running properly in the next couple of weeks. will be running 24 hours, seven days a week. How many people does that take to man? Um, it is, I mean, it's a very large scale operation. Um, it's, this facility itself is a very self-contained facility that looks after just the aerodynamic development of the car. So in order to support that, we have um, the aerodynamicists, the wind tunnel test engineers, but then we've got the model designers, the mechanical designers, we've got the model shop, um, model makers, we've got pattern makers in the pattern shop all geared towards producing a steady stream of components mm. that we can test. So how many in number is that, Simon, would you um, say? It's approximately about 50 people in total here. And we're, at the, we're kind of at the frontiers of, of physics here, aren't we? You know, this is, this is frontier stuff to a degree. Um, it is. I mean, to an outsider, yeah. watching an F1 car go around a corner mm. seems to defy the laws of physics yeah, because yeah. It, it seems to mm. stick to the corner mm. in a way that mm. you wouldn't think was possible. Um, and although you may think it's pushing the laws of physics, it's actually using the laws of physics mm. to actually... It's appropriating them. them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. An interesting thing, I think, for, for neutral observers who don't understand the science of these things, the wings, when you see a Grand Prix car for the first time, you think they're delicate things at the front and at the back, but in actual fact, they're beasts, they're rock solid, they're made of the lightweight materials, carbon fibre, yeah. but they're, they're meant to hold an awful lot of loading. Indeed. What um, is the loading on, on, on the wings at maximum setting? At the end of a very fast straight, say Barcelona, yeah. um, when the car's reached its top speed, yeah. the forces on the um, front wing, for example, would be three quarters of a ton. Appearance level, you think that you might be able to snap it if you, if, if you lent on it, but... Certainly not. If you, um, if, if you lent on it, it would, yeah. it would stay there. Yeah. Um, obviously, there are incidences on the track when front wings, rear wings, yeah, yeah, come yeah, off, yeah, but yeah, those yeah. are very yeah. high impact yeah. accidents in mm. reality, even mm. though on TV they look very light. This is the seven post room. What is that, you ask? Well, this houses a rig with seven posts, funnily enough, and this incredible piece of machinery allows the engineers to simulate what happens to a car on the track. With me is Richard Frith. Head of Vehicle Dynamics, if I've got that right, Richard. Yes. You are responsible for what goes on in this room. Yes, essentially. Um, what we've got here is uh, a rig that we can put the whole car on um, and we can look in detail at any particular problems uh, that we may have at the track or design-related problems um, that we, look, we want to analyse in more depth, essentially. So this puts the forces on the car that it will experience as it bombs around the circuits 
Th that's yours. right, yeah. yeah. I mean, even down to every bump in the road, uh, we can look at that in detail and look how the suspension is dealing with that. So for the different circuits, the car is configured differently. Do you do uh, remedial stuff uh, looking back or do you, can you plot ahead and think, well, hold on a minute, we're going to Turkey next week. It's, it's tough there. It's, it's a mixture of both, mm. really. Um, we tend to do around 80 or 90 percent of our uh, analysis work in, term, in, in computer simulations um, but you always need a rig like this um, to actually come back to say if you had a particular problem um, you can look as you say at his historic data mm. um, or looking forward say we're going to Monaco we can look at particular setups which will deal specifically with the requirements of that track. Now this is obviously Formula One specific does this have a, a this has a function in the car industry as a whole I would have thought, but not to this um, intimate degree. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's a similar piece of kit to, to what you would tend to find at major automotive manufacturers. The difference comes in the way that we use it. Um, they would probably look at it more in terms of uh, noise, vibration and harshness analysis, whereas we're looking to optimise uh, the grip at the four corners of the, of the, of the car uh, to get the most out of the tyres. As an investment, what does this kind of cost a Formula One team? Um, you're probably looking uh, at around half a million pounds upwards, um, depending on the spec of your, your particular rig. Um, so, yeah, it's a significant amount of money. Nothing's cheap in this business, is it? No. <laughs> Including you, I'm told, Richard. <laughs>